And we're immediately back. Oh my god, that is loud in my ear. Excuse me. There. Okay. The second one may be quiet. It is not at night, and I plan on doing both sessions, so... Here we go. I knew this would be big. What a treasure! Oh, God. How many air areas are there? Scout ship set. I need two more things. Okay. Let's go. You know, right where we're going. See this once actually. Automatically? I'm not sure. Oh, I guess it does. And you. Not worth my time. Wow, all sorts of things popped out. Yep, it's a whimsical wonderland over here. Now, this is gonna be a long journey over there again. Wait, can I just like Nope, I wish. Uh, excuse me. find like the excavation point things because that might lead to other missions.
Everyone ready to play? If you want to live. God, this area feels like forever ago. We are going this way. touch it. You'll hurt yourself. In other words, the rest of her is fair game. Not unless you really want to get hurt. God, 
where's the geo tree for this area? Oh, there it is. Oh, can, can we straight up? Please tell me it can happen. Oh, that would be dope. This will make traversal easier. Still here? Or is it? Oops, oh, so it's like okay, through that next door down here. Ferocious it gets, right? I'd rather not find out. Let's take it down fast. No mercy. Wounds up and shoots. Cut. Wasn't I? Whew. I don't know how, but we managed to beat it. It devoured other demons purely by instinct. Sounds kind of like me, doesn't it? <sighs> so you've eaten a few cows, or demons, whatever. When you're hungry, you eat. The only ones who put any moral weight on it are humans. Personally, I wouldn't sweat it too much. What are you trying to say? It's fine. I don't really care if I'm seen as a bad guy. I don't really know how to put it, but... I sensed a kind of strength inside that demon. Like a determination to continue living. It was powerful and frightening, but I don't think it was bad. Figures. Oops, more this button. Go ahead of these ones. Do a sweep of these areas. We'll just go down the list. sinner and repent your wicked deeds why are you whispering 
Because everyone else in your group has been nothing but trouble. Not a single one of them will truly repent. What kind of place do they think this holy sanctuary is? I don't know what to tell you. You'll have to take it up with them. I can't. You know what they're like, right? If I complain about it to them, they'll just beat the stuffing out of me. I wish I could tell you that deep down they're all good people, but... <sighs> That's why you need to confess something. What? Why me? Please, I just want to hear a legitimate confession for once. If you don't hurry up, I'll put a curse on you. <sighs> oh, all right. I'm so sorry for all the trouble that my companions have caused you, Father. Forgive me. No, that's not going to work. I guess I'm not quite in the mood to forgive that yet. Yes! <laughs> well, maybe you should repent for being such a petty, mean old priest! <laughs> Spot. Beers Lake. What the fuck is Beers Lake? Oh, this town. It's you! Uh, Mogilu's debauchery. It's menagerie. <laughs> I finally get a chance to see the famous Mogilu's menagerie. I've been waiting forever to meet up with you again. Meet up with us? Why? Well, with my bad luck, I've always just missed out on seeing your splendiferous performances. So, well, I made my own menagerie. The Abbey is a mess, and people everywhere are scared. Demons abound, and... Well, everyone's so gloomy. So I thought that this is exactly the time when people need something fun and happy to lift their spirits. My troop is still in training, but we're almost ready. That's wonderful. What do you call yourselves? I wanted something with power, impact. So behold, we are the Dark Wings. Dark Wings. Huh. Hey, what gives? That's a terrible reaction. You're trying to cheer people up, right? So why dark? And dark wings only make me picture crows. Or bats, maybe. Really? When I think of the dark wings, I think comedy. Hmm. Maybe I should rethink this. Oh, I got it! We'll be the dark smiles! Hmm. Sounds like you've got a pretty dark sense of humor. You really want to go with such a dark-hearted name? Okay, fine. The dark magic. No, the dark circus! No, no, that's no good. The darkest hour! The dark... Maybe you could try losing the dark part. Hmm, good point. All right, then. How about this one? The Peddlers of Joy! We don't accept solicitations. <sighs> fine, fine, forget you. <laughs> I've made my decision. We're Darkwing Menagerie of Comedy, and that's final! He really went all out. Still, you got zing, kid. Here's hoping you have many dark years to come. Magikazam! Thanks! That makes us rivals. About that Magikazam of yours? You only used that spell when you couldn't care less. What this world needs now is a good- But here's hoping you have many- Magikazam! Oh we put all our faith in you because you said you could protect us. We endured all your harsh rules and laws. So how can you tell us you can't defeat the demons because you can't control Malakim anymore? We don't understand why we've lost the ability to control our Malakim. But even without my Malak arts, I will fight to my dying breath to protect all of you. So please, calm down. Huh. I'm not listening to anything the Abbey says anymore. What are you looking at? Yeah, you there. Mean looking guy. Get over here. I think I'll pass. Thanks. Hey, muscles! Get back here! I'm not through with you! Please stop. I understand that you're worried and upset, but now isn't the time to be fighting amongst ourselves. Please, let us all stand together. Help us fight off the madness and the demons that threaten our world. 
And if that's not good enough for you, you can face me instead. Guess I'm sorry. That exorcist has some serious backbone. Aye. Okay, there's two, three, four. The tavern's got five. The inn's got six. I thought I could make things work out if I just got to the capital, but finding a job here isn't easy. We worked so hard and lived so well in that town. Why did this have to happen to us? We should tell the Abbey what happened. They'll help us and kill all those evil demons. We know that place better than anyone. We can help the Abbey recapture it. I'll never forgive those demons. Or the Lord of Calamity. I'm sorry. Me that you can mop the floor with the water you've used for washing rice, and it'll make the wood shiny. Is that true? It is. Not only does it get the floor clean, it'll put on a layer of rice brown oil at the same time. Two birds with one stone. Wow, that's awesome! I didn't know that. Yeah, rice water has a lot of uses. The first time you use a new earthenware pot, boil rice water in it, and you'll extend its lifespan. And if you use it when you're rehydrating dried fish, it'll tenderize it and take away the fishy smell too. And if you water plants with it, it acts as a fertilizer. It's really useful stuff. Wow, look at you, Velvet. Maybe I could see you with a family after all. You don't have to act so surprised. Still, I've never read that in any of my books before. How did you end up learning all that? I learned from Salika, who learned it from our mom. It's just been passed down across the family. Wow! What else did you learn from your sister growing up? Selica taught me everything our mom knew about cooking, from the basics to more advanced techniques. Speaking of which, rice water is really useful when cooking, too. If you use it to boil radishes, it'll get rid of their bitter taste. When you use it to boil bamboo shoots or burdock roots, they'll soften and take on a nice white color. My mother taught Salika that anyone who threw away rice water wasn't qualified for housework, and my sister passed it on to me, too. You know so many cool things! When I needed to make my bra... When you need to make a child eat their vegetables, it'll go over better if you can cook them tender and not so bitter. I bet you'd make a pretty good mom one day, Velvet. You really think so? Actually, since you're here, Bienfu, I have to ask. Those are discarded vegetables on your tray there, aren't they? Yeah, but they're just raw scraps left over from cooking. I was on my way to throw them out just now. What are you talking about? 
That's all still good stuff you can use. Look at those radish leaves. Dice them up, fry them in oil, add soy sauce, cooking wine, bonito flakes, and sesame seeds, and voila! A perfectly healthy topping for rice. And that potato skin? If you wipe the inner side on a mirror, it won't fog up. Put some salt on those lemon rinds and you can use them to scrub a wash basin sparkling clean. Holy cow, Velvet! You're a treasure trove of knowledge! You know what's been bothering me? These pirates are way too wasteful with their food. They leave so much garbage. Uh, you might be getting a little carried away here. Yeah. I think you've made the jump from potential mom to bothersome in-law. <laughs> That was funny. All right, down here then. Hey, it's you guys. Remember me? We met during that whole thing with the sword breaker. You convinced me to stop being a bandit. Yes, I remember you. You made it to Logress. Yeah, I finally saved enough to open up my bandit cuisine restaurant. I'm just looking for the right location now. You didn't steal that money, did you? Hey, I said I stopped being a bandit, didn't I? I took on honest work to save up for this. Repairing roads, delivering relief supplies, lots of hard labor. You really did turn over a new leaf. I think what you've done is incredible. Really? All right. <laughs> it was all worth it just to see that smile. Now that you've become a good man, I'm sure that even more wonderful things will come your way. Have you decided on your menu? Almost. I've got the eggless wild mushroom omelet and the highwayman stew, but I feel like I need one more standout dish. There's a tavern in this town that has mabo curry that's just out of this world. I want to try to beat them. Do you have any good ideas for me? Maybe something that'll help me draw in the ladies? Hmm. Maybe add a dessert menu? That might help. I know. Like a theft by chocolate cake. Or a roasted pear crime brulee tart? Well, that's certainly aggressive. Yeah, those sound great. Now my menu's complete. Hey, uh, when I'm a big success, you want to get hitched? <laughs> you shouldn't tease an exorcist. I'm not teasing. I'm serious. Marry me. Well, good luck with your restaurant. Ooh, rejection hurts. Miss Holier Than Thou delivered some just desserts. <coughs> Sweet rejection. It'd make a good cake name. Ah, the taste of defeat is bittersweet. Okay, enough with the food pot. Take a look at this. Air mouth. Show them how. Wait, where did I just go to? Okay. The Lord of Calamity has brought fear to the entire kingdom. Grim whisperings echo through the streets in every town. It's gloom and grief all around. So many people at church have lost someone close to them. But it is in the saddest times when smiles are most needed. Dark expressions cast dark shadows. Smile in the face of sadness. Now that's a real man. That old guy knows what's what. I'm not saying you need to make light of everything, but try to leave a little room for joy in your life. Like when you eat good food, or see a beautiful flower. Or even this fountain. Water wells forth, a symbol of hope. Even though life may be hard, I keep at it. I work hard so that this fountain never runs dry. And I'll help you maintain it, so that it stays a place where people can come to feel at ease. Now that there are less exorcists around, we can rely on the Abbey to do everything for us. We need to start by doing what we can do, to make this world a brighter place. So where are you going to start? With everything as harsh as it is now, people feel like they need to sacrifice excess and live frugally. I agree that we should act in moderation and refrain from excessive luxury. But we need joy to keep us going, right? That's why we've decided to open up a restaurant. We want to make people happy by making good food and good drink. What sort of food will you make? 
That's what I'm researching now. I'm walking the world, trying different foods. I heard they have this amazing Mabo curry. But to be honest, the place looks a little intimidating. Just treat it like it's any other restaurant. I've been in there, and the Mabo curry is great. Really? So it's a Mabo curry even the kids can like? I gotta try me some of this. I wish you wouldn't call me a kid. My bad. I didn't mean to step on your pride there. I was too preoccupied with thinking about our restaurant's mission statement, and I neglected to consider your feelings. I'm terribly sorry. It's not that big of a deal. But what do you mean by mission statement anyway? We're a restaurant that's fun for the whole family. Our slogan is, we'll feed you from the cradle to the grave. It's supposed to be a place people eat. You might not want to mention graves. I think a person would need a lot of courage to go eat there. Whoa. Why didn't I think about that? You seem to miss a lot. Are you sure you're up for running a restaurant? We'll be fine. I studied up on a lot of restaurant management, and I plan on hiring a really good chef. All that's left is to select a menu and come up with a new slogan. Instead of cradle to grave, how about from this life to the next life? Your food's killing them either way. Rats, I can't think of anything. How about fine dining from baby teeth to dentures? Not bad, eh? That's fantastic. It gets rid of that whole duh. They've got a long... Welcome. You came back. I did. This place is important to me. Are you sure it's okay to be in a town like this? Don't worry about us. Besides, I'm more worried about the bar. I'm only away for a little while and look at this place. The casks are empty and all the food tastes like dirt. Just a little bit ago, we finally got a delivery in. It was barely enough to open up shop. Do you have enough to make Mabo curry? I do. Great! Thanks for worrying about us. But leave the town to the townsfolk. You should just focus on what you have to do. Just make sure you don't have any regrets. Thanks, Tabitha. You there with the big sword. You've got skills, don't you? How can you tell without seeing me in battle? I'm just a mere swordsmith, but I've known all sorts of swordsmen. Sometimes a sword's spirit is much weaker than its owner's, and it can't match his prowess. Other times, the sword's spirit is too strong for its wielder to master, and it holds its owner in disdain. You can tell? Even if someone doesn't draw his sword? Not always, but sometimes. In his case, it was easy. His spirit is in perfect sync with the one residing in his blade. Really? I never thought about my sword that way before. I'm sure whoever forged that sword is glad to have a man like you wield his work. I'd love to meet a swordsman to whom I could happily entrust my work. But first I need practice. I've got to sharpen my skills and my spirit. Good luck! Thanks. Hmm. I thought that would have started another quest.
Next weekend is Bunny Bonanza Saturday. Bunny Bonanza Saturday? What's that? I've heard of this. You eat a hearty, healthy meal of rabbit meat to help you get nice and strong. You eat rabbits? No, silly. The night of the third Saturday of every month, lonely people go to sleep hugging a rabbit. Huh. If you go to sleep with a fuzzy friend in your arms, you're sure to have good dreams. No, I'm sure I heard that you eat them, too. You must be thinking of Rat Pig Roundup Saturday. There's a Saturday for Rat Pigs, too? Yep. On the night of the third Saturday of every month, people who aren't lonely eat Rat Pigs to get nice and strong. Makes sense. Rat Pigs are great sources of nutrition. An amazing choice for anyone, lonely or not. The secret to a happy family is Rat Pig Roundup Saturday. That's what I always say. <laughs> I feel bad for the Rat Pigs. First mate, sir, I heard an interesting rumor. Apparently, Vortigern came under attack in the middle of reconstruction. The place was completely sacked. Are you serious? Any idea who did it? They say it was a single demon. He called himself Lancelot de Capulus and challenged one exorcist in particular to come try and fight him. Lancelot. That's Count Capulus's first name. The nobleman they say was kidnapped? Did he turn into a demon? Or is this some kind of scheme? Hey. Any chance you know if the exorcist he wants to fight is Shigure? Yeah, he seeks a duel with Legate Shigure Rangetsu, or so the rumor goes. That's the real Count. That's a bit of a leap. The Count is a prideful man, but when the Abbey stole his political power, his own former servant Shigure rose to Legate and suddenly outranked him. The disgrace must have been worse than death. Then the lord your family used to serve was... That's right, the Kapaluses. Then... If the Kapaluses were the royal family's hidden dagger, the Rongetsu clan was its blade. A demon that can wipe out Vortigern is no joke. If we could team up with him, that'd give us a real edge. That's a real big if for some of us, Aizen. <sighs> Sail there immediately. Is that right? Damn it. What are these? Oh, yeah. Neat. I was just getting
might be this way. If not, it's that one over there. It is this one. I see you've come, Shigure. Count Kapalus. It's been a long time. Oh, wait. Is that you, Rokuro? Leave now. You are not the one who I summoned here. I want your brother, the traitor Shigure. Sir, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Shigure's execution was assigned to me. Ha! <laughs> oh, please. Don't make me laugh. You had your chance. You couldn't even scratch him, you wretched dog. <clears throat> Frankly, I don't need any Rongetsu to do my bidding any longer. Not with the power that I've attained by devouring everyone in the entire manor. I shall administer your punishments myself, with my own hand. You're the one who devoured the people at the manor? How could you do that? <laughs> I never knew humans were so delicious. After I make a meal of you and the rest of those damnable exorcists, this will be my kingdom, my feeding ground! Welp, it looks like the only thing that got abducted was this guy's conscience. Remain there, Rokuro. Your lord commands you. Wait and be thankful that your blood will stain my blade beside your brother's. There's no reasoning with this guy. Wait. Rokuro? I refuse. If you simply wanted to eat flesh, then perhaps I wouldn't stop you. But dying to you would make a mockery of the Rangetsu name. Turn your blade on me or my brother and we won't hold back. Not even against an impotent lord. You... How dare you speak to your master like that! Black you are the greatest time! Killing Flash! But I'm this close! I won't miss! Form Zero! Thunder! No! I'm not waiting! No mercy! Wounds I won't see! Cut me flat! Slip my head! Kill Crusher! you were hoping to negotiate an alliance. Don't worry. I don't think he's someone we could fight alongside. Come on, Rokuro. You wanted to kill him from the very start, didn't you? No. Well, maybe a little. So you did want to. You're a pretty scary guy when push comes to shove. Whatever happened to honoring your ancestral debt? I don't think I'm a hypocrite. My debt was made when I was human. That has nothing to do with the demon I am now. That's how you really look at it? I do. I incurred my debt toward you after I became a demon, and you can count on me to repay it. I'll take your word for it then. But Rokuro, when the Count said he was going to kill Lord Shigure, was that really something impossible to forgive? Hmm. How do I say it? 
I will kill anyone who disparages Arangetsu's skill. That's all. Ah, that's just nonsense. I'm sure I sound like the Count. I won't ask you to understand. Of course I don't understand. But still... I don't think it's nonsense. There are just some things a person can't surrender. I heard that this recent rash of demon attacks is the work of a demon known as the Lord of Calamity. I heard that too. They say she built a nest in Mount Kilaros where she breeds swarms of demons like some kind of queen ant. Really? That's not what I heard. I heard she's a giant hideous hag with the head of a dragon and a mouth with gnashing teeth in each hand. I think they just called you a hideous hag. Mouth hands? Oh, how ghastly! That's not all. Those mouths spew forth clouds of toxic gas. Any human caught in it turns into a demon. Wait, is that where demon blight comes from? I couldn't say. It's just a rumor after all. But I haven't even gotten to the crazy part. This demon has a familiar, a short little thing that uses a huge board to create winds that spread the demon's poison. Rumor says that the nasty little creature takes the appearance of a trickster magician and is actually the demon's true form. So some short little monster has caused all of this? <gasps> kind of makes you hate anyone short, doesn't it? <laughs> so the Lord of Calamity is actually a short, phony magician. What do you know? Woe is me! My cover's been blown! Go, my hideous hag! Devour those meddlesome humans! <laughs> Salt. I take it you're a Bloodwing. Do you have something for me? Yeah, I've got something I think you'll like. I heard a treasure chest washed up on the rocks of Manan. And get this, nobody can open it. A treasure chest that won't open? If it won't open, why doesn't anyone just smash it apart? The Abbey's thrown who knows how many Praetors at it. And not only can they not open it, they can't even budge it. Ooh, now you're talking my language. It might be treasure from the far continent. Hmm? Do you know something about it, Aizen? Hush. <sighs> I don't see why I should care about it. Thanks anyway. What was that about, Aizen? You know something about that treasure chest, don't you? I think it probably drifted here from the far continent. Wow! Really? What makes you say that? It sounds just like something I saw when I was there. Do go on, I'm all ears. Let's go give it a look. If we really can't get it to open, I'll cut right through it. That won't be necessary. I know how to open it. In fact, Eifried was the one who figured it out. Uh, now I get it. Is that where he found... Yeah. That's where he found Siegfried. If that's true, I'd hate to let the Abbey or the Bloodwings get their hands on whatever's inside. Off to Manon we go. Oh my god. Oh. 
Looks like we're ending the video where we started it. Is that the treasure chest from the far continent? Right then. Aizen, how do we go about opening it? Hmm. Well, I'd still be happy to cut it open, you know. Don't. You'll probably end up cutting what's inside. There's a password. It means wealth in the language of the far continent. Von Eltia. It opened! What? That's all it took? Talk about anticlimactic. I didn't know the ship's name came from the far continent. Yeah. An engineer who helped design the ship was familiar with technology from there. He probably supplied the name. And by that bizarre twist of fate, Siegfried came into Eifried's hands. So what's inside? Anything interesting? It's a book. Ugh, that's so lame. You're killing me here. It's really old, but... It's written in a language I can read. It's titled, Research Notes on Siegfried and Its Special Abilities. Wait, so it's like a manual for using Siegfried? Yeah, some of it's missing, but I'm pretty sure. Another twist of fate! Fee, keep going. Let's hear more. Believed to be a relic from the Avarost period, Siegfried utilizes an embedded formula to enable its wielder to manipulate mana. The commonly held belief is that Siegfried can alter, and thereby amplify, the mana of its host. But this is only its most basic capability, which is utilized to initiate and control its true functions. Its true functions? Does that mean it can do more? It looks that way. Our analysis suggests that Siegfried was originally created as a specialized anti-dragon weapon. <sighs> Oh my, the plot thickens. To that end, Siegfried can fire volitional bullets that bestow certain special effects upon its targets. These bullets, made from crystallized mana, can cause disabilities depending on the intent with which they have been imbued. Known bullet varieties include one that can sever power links and one capable of temporarily blocking out the influence of malevolence. Bullets that block malevolence, huh? Does it say where these bullets are? Um... No. Sorry, the rest is too worn to read. That's all right. Hmm. We can't be sure if it's true or not, but it sounds plausible at least. Aizen, how about we go looking for those bullets? No. I have no need for them. But if you have them, you could... I have other things I need to worry about. And anyway, Siegfried belongs to Zavid now. Lafayette, next time you see him, I want you to tell him what you read. Are you sure? Please. I have a feeling he'll track those bullets down. Even if he has to cross the whole world looking for them. All right. I'll tell him. I promise. Lo, is this another twist of fate in the making? But how?
wow. Oh, how will it turn out? <sighs> Can't you be serious just once in your life? I think she's just saying Aizen's doing the right thing, in her own weird way. And it's true that nobody knows what the future holds. That's for sure. And I like it that way. Do you really mean that? I do. It would be pretty boring to know everything that's coming, don't you think? <laughs> that's fair. I know what I'm going to do. After this session, I'm gonna... Our scout ship has returned! Record the first. Mysterious. Well, well. Now... Good luck, out. <laughs> Have you heard the rumors? People are saying there's a talking Pengyon around. I didn't know Pengyons could talk. It's true. Three people have already talked with it near the beach at night. You don't say. We should totally try to capture it. It'd be a great addition to Moggy Lou's menagerie. Well, this is no light matter here in Salt. Local legend has it that when the end times come, a talking Pengyon will declare judgment upon the sinful. Everyone who's encountered this Pengyon has been bedridden from the sheer shock of it. Are you sure it's not just some demon? It doesn't appear to be, though it does seem to be quite aggressive. It goes after people, attacking them as it yells, I'm a medical student from Rize Maxia! Is that supposed to be its judgment or whatever? I have no idea, but whatever you do, you'd better not visit the beach at night. This is some kind of reverse psychology trick, right? Oh, wait a minute. Huh. Oh, I can't sleep. I think I'm going to head down to the beach and check things out. I'm with you. Some things just can't be avoided. You're going to look yes, for that spirit, talking pengyon, aren't you? What makes you say that? We're just going on a walk. Look, Velvet! There's a Pengyon! Think it might be the talking one? Oh, good evening. Lovely weather, isn't it? It really talked! I can't believe it. Something I eat can talk? Huh? Wait, do you guys eat us Pengyons too? <sighs> Why does it matter? Please, answer my question. It's very important. I'm sorry, but yes, I eat them. And I'll happily devour most anything if I have to. Well then, I suppose you people are just like the others who came before. I can't let you keep doing that! Oh, and what's a cutesy little pengyon like you plan on doing about us big bad humans? Uh... Dude, you're not a human. What the hell are you? I'm sorry for deceiving you all, but I can't let you hurt any more Pengyons. Now, rise, arise, ascending, angels! Oh. All set, roll in the snap! Eat it! Dark and light, girl crusher! Take this!
might turn back into a pangyon. No matter. Wait, why are you so intent on fighting us when you're outnumbered? I have to protect my fellow pangyons from the likes of poachers like you. Poachers? We're not poachers, I swear. We just came here to see a talking pangyon. Really? But then, why did you guys say you eat pangyons? Sorry, I guess we should have explained more clearly. This one will eat anything. I yeah, sorry about that. And as for me, the only pangyon I ever eat is what I buy properly at the market. We're not good people, but we're not those kinds of villains either. Oh. Well, in that case, I should apologize for jumping to conclusions and picking a fight. I just ran into some pangyon poachers earlier, and I'm afraid I'm a little on edge right now. Those must be the other people who've spotted you here. They're all sick in bed just from the shock of meeting you. Small fries like them, I bet they'll think twice before they try to poach another animal. So, what are you then? Some special representative of Pinyon kind? No, I'm Jude Mathis. I'm a medical student from Riza Maxia. A medical student from Riza Maxia? It's in a different world from yours. Actually, I'm a human just like you all, but... Somehow I was flung into this dimension, and when I came to, I looked like this. So, basically, you're a human from another world, but when you came here, it made you turn into a pangyon? This story of yours, quite a tale. The whole thing's pretty hard to believe. It certainly is. However, when I was lost and confused, the pangyons here were kind to me, and took me in as their own. I wanted to repay the favor to them since they've done so much for me. So you've been protecting them from any poachers who come. But don't you have bigger things to worry about right now? Looks to me like you're too soft-hearted. I get that a lot. Well, we've heard your story. But even if it is true, it doesn't sound like there's anything we can do for you. Don't worry about me. I'll figure out how to get home on my own, one way or another. The problem is that a friend of mine got sent to this world with me, but I haven't been able to find her. My hunch is that she's also turned into a pangyon. You haven't heard of any other talking pangyons, have you? Can't say I have. Sorry. Oh, okay. What kind of person is this friend of yours? Maybe we'll run into her later. Her name is Mila. She has pretty red eyes and long golden hair. She carries herself with dignity and possesses a commanding presence. What else? Oh, and one of her quirks is that whenever she sees something tasty, she drools. That's an interesting quirk. You mean she actually drools? Also, she's known as the Lord of Spirits because she's accompanied by four summon spirits with command over the elements. Ooh, Lord of Spirits. How royal sounding. Got it. If we hear anything, we'll let you know. It may be hard, but try to keep your spirits up, Jude. Thank you all so much. I hope you guys get a lead on Mila. You care about her even more than yourself. Uh, well, how do I put it? She's just... a really special person to me, I guess. Fair enough. Oh my god, I forgot that was a fucking thing. That's another damn scared to see. A talking penguin. Oh, god damn it. I didn't dream that up, right? No, that penguin was very real. Or rather, it seems to actually be a human named Jude. He said he came from another world. No matter how much we see, life is still full of mysteries, isn't it? He's got guts, I'll give him that. It'd be nice if we could help him somehow. He's kind to Pangyons, too. If he was telling the truth, that would make him a castaway from another dimension. We seafarers always help out anyone who's adrift. 
Personally, I'm curious about this Mila girl, the Lord of Spirits. She might have a connection to the four Empyreans, or even Inominat himself. Seems unlikely, but I suppose anything's possible. Just in case, I'll keep everything Jude the Pengyon told us in mind. Okay. 